Wholesale. Wholesale. That's a Cherokee greeting. And wave the great feather. For the good of it. It's kind of continuing from last week. Last week we were at Twig's Tea and Coffee Shop. And my main theme there was the vernal equinox at Chichen Itza. So I did you know, a little bit of you know, personal history in that. And so I'm kind of continuing with this. So uh, the topic today, I think I will call it like Native Mexico's old uh, spirits of spring. I think it'll kind of go that way. And also it's my gratitude you know, to Mexico for all that Mexico has given to me. Uh, quite wondrous and how it all came about. And just a note to say how did I come to be there. Simply, um, I was a graduate student uh, doing a project for my art history and uh, I noticed nobody was, well mostly people don't pay much attention to uh, the antiquities of Mexico and its history. So I picked that like that. So I you know, was fishing around and uh, this, the college I was at there in Oakland, Berkeley uh, opened up a satellite campus in Mexico in the state of Michoacan. So that gave me a base. I rented a house there and so forth. It was affiliated with the uh, University of Morelia in Michoacan. And in the second year I traveled around more and uh, in that, you know, I investigated quite a few things. I also uh, became friends with the Zapotec family from Oaxaca, and uh, that really opened up a lot for me because the young woman actually, I was on my project and I was in uh, uh, Cuernavaca, south of Mexico City, to see a well, former studio of Diego Rivera. It ended up, I got my master's focusing on the art of Diego Rivera. And uh, he had built his former studio uh, as a, so, so, a Toltec, like a Toltec uh, castle maybe you could call it like that. And then I encountered uh, a woman there, a Mexican woman, and uh, she introduced me to her family in Mexico City. And subsequently, uh, we actually took a trip down to Oaxaca uh, to see the ruins. I mean, her whole family, we went there. Um, also in Mexico City, she took me to introduce me to uh, the Shrine of the Virgen de Guadalupe and also uh, trips to the um, Anthropology Museum there in Chapultepec Park where she you know, pointed out things to me that are native knowledge, native knowledge to the artifacts in there. And so a, a lot, a lot came through to me in that way. So to start off with this, I'm going to say here, this is my painting. You can show here up here. This is my painting. And the title for this painting is, is Hunapku. Now Hunapku is a Mayan name for, I think, comparably if I say in Lakota, Wankan Tonka, Great Spirit, Takuskanskan, all that's animated, or in Cherokee, Galunlati. I uh, get the basic idea of what uh, Hunaku is. Uh, Hun means the one. So it means like the one who gives the sacred, one who gives measure and movement uh, is the whole idea of that. And you know, you see here is a, a serpent there and the name you know, for that is um, Luko Ben Tun Ben Pan means swallowed one gets knowledge. So all of these things that are going on in here, here you see a, a G like that, and that's a real thing. And there's a coyote spirit and the deer. All of these features in here have, are, a, are kind of a synthesis of the knowledge that I gained in Mexico. <laughs> you go down here, because I said that G, here's a, a formal G. That is what it's called, the G, and what it is, it's the origin of the universe. Basically, it means the Milky Way. And you see this worked into all kinds of things all over ancient Mexico. That's a real main feature there. 
and uh, you can go all the way over there to the far right here. <clears throat> uh, but I call this the foilated cross. I was in uh, Palenque, the ruins of Palenque is really called, you know, Namcha, and there was a cross. The Spaniards, I guess it is, you know, notice, you know, it really Palenque seems to be, for one, all about the sacred tree. The sacred tree, like Teodal. Teodal would be a name to say the sacred tree. And here, this is a cross. And this cross is Yuahongche, uh, meaning that this is the sacred cross. And in the center of it, I have a figure. This face is uh, characteristic of the sculptures from Veracruz. So here, in my context here, this is would be Shata, boy, uh, kind of the spirit of the, of the tree. Basically, that's what it would mean. And so that's you know very very sacred. Different peoples, including the Celts, have you know a sacred tree. So we have those kind of things here, here. And then I come over here to this figure here, because I have a reading for that. And along with that, you see this, this here, this is a baby magui. We had a mama magui in our, our yard that became huge, huge, and grew a huge, huge, huge stalk. And uh, eventually, we had to take it down. And this is one of her babies. You know, they sprout all around. And it's very, very significant, you know, in Mexico. I have actually did a painting, sometimes I show it here, of Mexica. The people call Aztecs, that's a name that's been given to them, but they really call themselves the Mexica from the goddess that appeared in the Maui here. So I'm kind of starting out with that between this and this picture here as the obsidian butterfly. The Mangui plant opens their petals. It is our mother, she whose face is a mask. Her starting point is Tamawachang. The goddess is upon the pointed cactus. She is our mother, obsidian butterfly. Oh, let us look upon her. She is fed upon stag's hearts in the nine plains. She is our mother, queen of this earth. With fresh earth and with fresh plumage is she clad. At the four corners of the earth where the darts are broken. Oh, into a deer she is converted. Over the stony ground coyote comes to behold her. The praise ripples outward in his hands like a flower. Who does not long for you, you that makes all the flowers bloom? Oh, life's creatoress. So that's all contained in here. That's a, an Aztec poem. And down here in front of her, uh, this figure here is Bulaka Khan. And he means priest of the heavenly serpent. And we had Quetzalcoatl, um, the uh, serpent uh, in the sky, definitely Ariel. And this would be like an envoy of this, and this is Mayan. This is Mayan, and here he is holding, you know, a little effigy of the serpent. And I have one here in front, here. And he's also called Jacopia, meaning a portion of heaven. So that's a very particular character here for this theme. And here, going along with this, this is a jaguar called Badam. And for my knowledge, kind of uh, initiations, the book called the Chalam Balam of Jumayel was mainly instrumental uh, in my going to Mexico at that time, meaning it is the prophecy of the Jaguar priest. So the Jaguar figures very much here in these things here. And if we can go over here, you can see this figure here 
And this this figure here is um, well, maybe I should start to say, ha ha cha o. He's like the the great lord of consciousness. He is what Buddha is to people in India. Ha ha cha o is he's the Buddha of Mexico. Basically, I could say that. And his, uh, his emblem is this O, O, O. So like the tree is a Tiopo, the sacred tree. O means uh, consciousness, cosmic consciousness. And the back of this figure is carved with that. So I've reproduced it. I carved it into a pot shard like it is on the back of this figure. And the way that this came about, my knowledge that is, the way that it came about, I was traveling with this Zapotec family. Um, uh, the senor, he was a tailor there in Mexico City. And suddenly, with my being there, um, they wanted to go back to his home village, Miahuatlan, in Oaxaca. So we all, by bus, you know, made, made that travel there. There in Oaxaca, there's an ancient place. It's, you know, Oaxaca is like a big valley. In the middle of the valley, there's a huge mesa. And on that mesa is Monte Alba. You know, these are ruins of the ancient people, the Zapotecs, which these people uh, were of there. And so there are ruins there. And Victoria and I, you took the bus up there. The family didn't go up there <clears throat> like that. So while we're out there, she ushers me over to a kind of a secret. We have a secret here, like that. And uh, I don't even know how to say where it was, but there was like, you know, an opening in the ground. And down there in the ground, uh, like a room, like a cell, uh, down there. And there's somebody down there. So there's nobody else around, you know. She's taking me over there to show me something that's secret. And down there, there's a woman. It's down there. And she has something uh, shiny that she's using the sun to reflect on a statue, a figure uh, down in there. So that's who this is. That is, is their secret, is that there still is um, the Mexican, native Mexican Buddha. And that's who this replica is of. And curiously, the maker of this uh, carved that image on the back of it, his initials, or her initials, and uh, 1968, so I was there in 1969. So I think I find that very, very significant. In uh, the books of Carlos Castaneda, the teachings of John, Don Juan, uh, reported to be, you know, a Yaqui shaman, or something of that effect, like that. <clears throat> in one part, um, he, Don Juan is disclosing to uh, Carlos some things that were very surprising to Carlos. And he made a comment, I thought that the Spaniards left no stone unturned in their conquering this country. And he said, they only turned over the stones that were in their own tonal. So they don't, they don't know about this. So that's what I'm alluding to here. There still is cultures that are going on under those turned over Spanish stones. And that's what was being disclosed here to me in this one event here. <laughs> now last week we had Chichen Itza, um, and that is there in the Yucatan. And I had a woven mat from there. Uh, also, that picture of the pyramid. The pyramid is also called Ku. Ku means, you know, sacred. It's a sacred place, it's a sacred uh, divine location, one of many that there are in Mexico and some that I was introduced to. And along with that, I have another artifact, remarkable. This figure here is, it says on the back, this is Chichen Itza, it's in Spanish here. And at the, uh, at the equinox, at the uh, spring equinox, um, the light and shadow figures like a serpent coming down the steps to culminate in the head of a serpent. It's like a dragon. 
here. So this is very significant. But also what I relate this to, this is black with gold trim or gold highlights. And that's very reminiscent of somebody, Neza Coyote. Neza Coyote, meaning hungry coyote. He was a king, if we can call him that, living about, I don't know, 100 years or more before Cortez invaded Mexico. And he's kind of a cross from the Lake Tecosho and the, the Aztec, we call them, the Mexica. They had an island that was their capital. But um, these people, the Tecoshans, uh, were not dominated by the Aztec. <clears throat> and so this man, Nezicoyotl, he was also a poet. I even had his book, amazingly, has survived and is published. Uh, so he's, you know, um, an ancient pre-Columbian poet like that. Well, he built his own pyramid. He, he built his own pyramid and it's black like this. Uh, another uh, Aztec noble had described it and that, that description has survived. So he painted it black with, uh, studded with gold like that. And he calls it, you know, uh, this is to the temple to the Lord of the close and near. And inside, instead of having statues like they usually had, it was just all black with stars in it. So, uh, I like that. Lord of the close and near seemed very appropriate for a coyote. And down here, here is an old mask of Quetzalcoatl with the, um, this is what the Quetzal bird looks like. Yes, it looks like that. And here's the snake, Coatl, meaning snake, in the stars. And so that's still, still surviving, still going on there. And then with mentioning of that, we go all the way back over here to uh, the foilated cross that you see there. There is a hummingbird. Now this hummingbird is, you know, uh, you mentioned here's the Quetzal bird. Now this is, you know, Quetzaliti. Quetzaliti is like little Quetzal because he's uh, so uh, colorful, he's so fantastic. And uh, the hummingbird is very, very important, very much an envoy and a, a messenger in all this. And the Aztecs also had a god, Huitzilipochtli, also meaning hummingbird. And it's going to figure in a piece that I'm going to read in a minute. And uh, so here, here, you see the uh, description over his head that I've made. Uh, again, this is the sacred G. This is, again, the origin of the Milky Way or the universe that comes from, from that. And when I go down here, this is this vessel here. Now, this is a sacred ritual vessel. This is not pre-Columbian. This is still an existing culture in Chiapas. The Chiapas is borders on Guatemala in southern Mexico. And it's a very heavy <coughs> jungle, evidently. And uh, the people there, they're called Alacandon. They're a Mayan people, and they've been there a while because they fled, you know, the brutality of the Spaniards <clears throat> and fled into the jungle, and that they have managed with a strategy of having small clusters of people um, were able to live there for quite a while and only relatively recently were even discovered. And there are also uh, Mayan ruins there. And they had their own uh, way of farming and so forth. Curiously, if you saw KPBS last week, they had a film about the Mayans, archaeologists, in Belize, um, I think it was the site called Caracol, there, and the, part, of, part of the the program was what happened to these people, why did their cities collapse? Well, one of the things that contributed to that was corn, maize. Uh, they found that the people became very dependent on maize, and then when, when a drought came, and they had no more um, food like that. <clears throat> so it's wondered why these people, the Lacandon, they don't have any um, 
gods or goddesses or things for maize. Well, you know why? <laughs> because they still rely on getting food from the forest, from the jungle there. And so this is a ritual pot, and here, the face of it <coughs> is um, ka'ok, 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 he's like a mukot in the Kawiya out here, he is the, the creator. Um, so that's, this is a ritual pot for ka'ok, that's his visage. What I have right propped in there is a little bowl with a little pot shard. This pot shard has a little inscription in it. It's from Palenque. When I was in Palenque, uh, I and my partner Joe, we met uh, a Mayan there and he told us to go into the jungle and uh, it's very, very wet, very moist, just to rub the dirt and things will come to the surface. And so I, I found pot jars like that and I managed to still have this and that's a little Mayan pot jar with an inscription on it and why I have it there because in the ritual relatively uh, pieces of pottery or even pieces of the old ruins are offerings to put offerings in down there and also down here I have a cone of copal so uh, you find copal it's kind of like a, like a resin, and you can buy bags of it down there. So those things go together with this uh, pot. Vermita uh, de Dios, you know, it's kind of like it's saying um, the pot of, of the God here. So that's the way that that is figuring. And I have, this is a maca feather. It seemed to be appropriate to have something emerging out of that, that pot. And then lastly on this visual, you can see here, this is my drawing. And I've done a lot of drawings and paintings all inspired by Mexico and Mayans and like that. So this is Smoker Woman. And this is, you know, the smoker god, Toledo, I think his name is, you know. So let's say like a ritual cigarette and there she's you know smoking like that with one of those pipes so this is you know called uh, my drawing of smoker woman so you can see all of that now I have to have a drink to Okay, now I'm going to read a piece. This is Nahua, a piece. Nahua are the people, the Aztecs. They're not the only people of that language family, but uh, that's where this is from. This is, you know, a study of the poetry and the poet kings of the Nahua. And uh, the hummingbird fits into this. You know, the hummingbird's very, very important as much as the Quetzal feather or we could say the hawk and the eagle here in Native America. And uh, the title of this is The Origin of Song. And this is the singer. The, the singer is the one who is uh, saying all of this. So I'll begin with that. Origin of Song. I converse with my heart. Where can I pick sweet scented flowers? Whom? shall I ask? I shall ask of the scintillating hummingbird, that fly bird. I shall ask of it of the golden butterfly. They must surely know. They know where the beautiful fragrant flowers open their petals. Let me plunge into this green black fir tree forest. This is where they must live. Already I can hear how their songs are blossoming. It is as if, as if the mountains held converse with them. This is where they must be, close by the water springs. They take their turn, first some, and then others sing. Here they give praise 
to the Lord of the world, all full of delightful trills. I said, I cried sadly, let me be grateful to you whom he loves. And at that very moment, they fell silent. Then the lovely, scintillating hummingbird came and spoke to me. Singer, what do you seek? I answered him and said, Where are the beautiful, sweet-scented flowers? With them I have to recreate your kind. They made a great clamor then. And then they said, Why, singer, we shall show them to you here. Perhaps with them you might recreate the kings, our kind. Into the innermost mountain, into the flower land, they ushered me. There they are spread, bathed in the sun's reflection. Behold, I saw them there, many peerless flowers, sweet-scented, lovely, perfume, dew-cloud flowers like a misty reflection stretching like a rainbow. And they tell me, in that place, pick as many flowers as you desire. Recreate our kind, O oh singer. Then you shall go and give them to our friends, the kings. They shall give pleasure to the Lord of the world. And I, in the hollow of my cloak, go putting many fragrant flowers, very pleasing to the soul, very delightful. I, the singer, went to pick them. I put wreaths of flower upon the princes. I made garlands for their breasts, or simply laid them in their hands. <coughs> then I sang a fine song, and with it the princes are glorified in the presence of the Lord, of the close and near. But is there nothing for their vassals? Where shall they see? Where shall they pick beautiful flowers? Will they really come with me to the land of the flowers? Is there nothing for their vassals, for those who wander sor sorrowing, those who suffer on earth? for those who do good deeds before the Lord of all, of all. Here on earth, my heart weeps. I remember where I went to rest my eyes upon the land of flowers, I, the singer. And I said, certainly the earth is not a good place. Certainly there is another place to which one has to go. Happiness is there. Only in vain are we upon this earth. There is another place, which is the place of life, where the fleshless are. There let me go. There many birds are singing. There let me enjoy beautiful flowers, sweet scented flowers, pleasing to the heart. They cheer, perfume, and intoxicate the people. They perfume, cheer, and intoxicate the people. Uh-oh. Which is fastest.